Hello, hello, it's Ruth here at Artful Stampin' and welcome to another Monday. It's Masculine Monday. I'm going to be using up some scraps that I recently sorted out and I did <laughs> helpfully put them into part of pattern stuff and plain stuff, but then I went through it and kind of just picked out sort of more what I would call slightly more masculine or less feminine looking um, pieces of patterned paper you know less flowers and butterflies and things and also got a little baggie here of bits and pieces that I've cut out now just a tip with that you know if you've got your machine out and you're cutting out some little pieces then you may as well keep the spares in a little bag and they just come in really handy when you're wanting to do quick card making or card making a bit like this really so hello and welcome hope you had a good weekend um lovely to see you all uh thank you for joining me on the live bob cheryl and annie great to see you guys of color kind of coordination just to help me when it comes to assembling so like here i've got blue green so i'll stick be a bit now there's a bit of brown in there but i do have some crumb that uh, i'm wondering whether just to... oh now this i really like this black card with the brickwork on it I'm trying to think what would look nice and dramatic with that oh got that uh, oh got that that might look nice with that then i've got I think you know, on that one texture it's got a gray there oh tiny bit of gray something now this is something I've got a feeling I stamped with this with Tom or did something I remember stamping this ages ago and I had planned for it. So look on the back side it's actually designer series paper um, but ended up stamping on it. Now I can see that my signal's not brilliant, so I'm just gonna check. There we go, that's a bit better. Our internet has been a bit weird today. So Right, but that wasn't what it was just then. I I hadn't adjusted my setting. Right, that and that. Oh, and then we've got these lovely bits and pieces in here to use. So actually that might go with some of that. Stick that tag over there. And there's got some nice little grey bits here. Hello Kelly. Yes, it, it was my fault. I hadn't swapped over the internet needed to use oh I do have these cute elephants to use at some point anyway right there we go we've got my little kind of I've got four piles here I'm not sure if I'm going to use every single one but um it's helpful when making doing this kind of card making just to assemble different things together that look similar and then kind of go from there really okay so with this type of card making, there aren't really loads of rules. You can um, just look at what you've got and try and assemble it. Now, I will go a few little rules. There's little things that I've picked up along the way for making these types of cards. One is embrace the tear. Don't be afraid to tear your card or your paper uh, to get it to be the right size. Because one of the fun things about this type of card making is... Um, you don't always need to use the scissors okay now also um, you can create kind of like a faux border if you stick enough items around or near the edge of your card you can kind of create a bit of a kind of faux like I said a faux border so without having to think about it too much I've kind of created that already I do quite like that piece as it is. I don't really want to play with that too much. However, I'm thinking I could pop some bits of this. So I'm just going to tear that down like so. And again, create little layers to tuck behind. And what this does is just helps really make this piece that I want to show off, makes it really pop. Um, now I'm looking at this, 
And I know I've got that crumb cake underneath there, but I feel like I could do with just a little bit more, just a little bit of detail. And I really like that stitched effect there. Isn't that fun? I like that. And that just seems to help finish that off. And I'm going to put that other piece down, down here somewhere. So now I need to decide what do I stick first? So I'm looking at this thinking, okay, so I know that the blue, I definitely want that blue behind there. So I'm going to just stick that on like so. There we go. So I know I definitely want that there. No question. Stick that there like so. Hi, Darlene, Karen, Jackie, Cheryl, Shirley, Lisa, Jane, Judy, Cheryl Adams. We've got Cheryl Adams and Cheryl Douglas on tonight. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, Georgiana. Uh, hi, Shirley. Shan. Oh, I've said hello to you guys. Judy French from Ontario, Canada. Excellent. Right, is it a bit better? Is the signal a bit better? Just changing my internet setting so that I can see myself better. Oh, that's better. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, and then I definitely want these placing. Sometimes I really do like to like one a, a single colour on another, the same colour, but with texture. It's just looks so sophisticated and lovely. Right. Put that in there. Now I would say for this technique you do need a nice flowing glue. You don't want one that's like stopping and starting on you. You want it, you know, there where you need it. So that you can get on and stick the pieces you need to get stuck down. Hello. Hi Janice. Hi Janine. Hi, Miss Bob. Move that bit closer to the edge. Give that a little ripple. Get rid of some of that glue. Now, I've got a bit too much. I don't know, it feels like it's all centred around here now, so I want to just put an extra couple of pieces up there now, and one underneath. Just slightly on the squint, I don't want it exactly middle-middle, because I think when you've got a design that's got very kind of organic elements to it you've got to be careful that you don't start looking too symmetrical we already have that real kind of like focal point there which is you know it's very square very balanced and then we've got the nice contrast then with the things that are slightly imbalanced but yet creating that lovely border to go around Right, I'm going to give that a good push down because this is um, a bit wrinkly. So this technique is actually one that I taught in, or I teach in class two with me. Um, I do teach Zoom classes and one of my jobs this week is to write descriptions for them all. I know you guys have been asking for them, but um, today I've been catching up with some other bits of paperwork. Right. Oh, there's a nice bit of, I wonder if I can slip that under there before it all sticks down. 
<laughs> oh, what about under there? Oh, it slips under there. Oh, that's all right. Right, okay, we could do that. Now I can just go back in and stick that in a second. But that's a nice little bit of detail, isn't it? I don't need as much as that over there. Right. Just going to knock that off. And then I'm going to stick that better because we don't want that slipping out. And I'm just going to undo some of the spin on it, the tw twist on this, make it a little bit more rough and um, not so pristine. There we go. Let's take that apart a bit. Um, We'll just untwizzle it. Okay. Oh, I love that. Look how it all comes kind of comes together. I'm going to pause myself <laughs> where I'm viewing myself. I've paused it. <laughs> Oops. Um, there we go. I love how that's, it looks so balanced and just gorgeous. And the thing about making things like this is that, uh, sorry, what I mean is when you've got a really beautiful pet focal point, it's very easy to kind of overdo it and have too much there and um but just go keeping it fairly simple with the colors it just oh love it that's turned out really well i really like that okay moving on so then we've got these little bits and pieces here and this i think i stamped quite a while ago now uh oh we've got the bigger bit of green there now again i have got that crumb cake so i could make that my base and this is a scrap, but you know, a good tradition of not necessarily using scissors. Let's just tear some card up. We don't necessarily need, I mean, I've got my scissors sitting here, but so what? Right. I think it might be fun just to tear this down. We're not going to uh, damage any of the deer. We'll leave the deer deer. The darling dear as they are. I might just split that up actually. friend messaging me about buying cards. Okay, right. Now, when you have a panel when that has different colours in it, it is kind of good to try and coordinate it as much as possible because by adding uh, little hints of some of the colour that's already used on the paper or the stamped paper or DSP or whatever it is you're using it just helps to make those colours pop a little bit more and it just helps in that kind of that repetition of the story as it were it's a bit like a piece of music that has re repeated motifs you know you have a repetition of something and then but maybe it will be faster or slower or um, quieter or with a slightly different instrument it's that kind of thing that we're going for so here we've got coastal cabana but stamped and now we've got that piece of torn coastal cabana in there uh, same with the old olive we've got it stamped there and now we've got that torn bit of old olive we've got crumb cake and maybe sahara sand I can't remember which in the back stamped there and then we've got the crumb cake in the background there 
So I'm kind of taking a risk by possibly adding this piece of DSP because this is just jade. Um, but we, I don't know, we've got some sort of elements of that there. So I'm not sure. Or we could just leave it and perhaps add... Um, just having a look at what I've got in here. And I quite like the idea of just adding a little bit of some scallop. And I know that's quite a, this is cinnamon cider, isn't it? It's quite a, a reddish brown, but I think it will be, it will go okay. So I'm wondering whether about adding that just underneath there. And then maybe some there. Um, and then the other thing I might do is before I stick it all down, I'm just going to get a brown, this is soft suede, and I want to kind of mimic a little bit those dots that are on there. So I'm just going to do a bit of ink splattering. Hi, Cheryl. Seems to me that tearing paper should be therapeutic. Haha, <laughs> yes. Very. <laughs> it's good fun. <laughs> okay, so let's get some... Oh, now this is quite dry, so it might not work. I know what we'll do. We'll do something else. I'll grab my early espresso. Uh, da, 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 da. This is my early espresso stamp and write marker and I'm just gonna splatter some ink particularly in the corners there and at the sides there we go might even do I don't know what we could always do some later on as well so but I'm just gonna let that dry for a moment so while that's drying um, I'm wondering whether to just tear down that side a little bit as well. <laughs> We've got the three shovels on tonight. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm just going to check how many shovels. Uh, yeah, we've got the three shovels, A, D and W. <laughs> oh, it just tickles me when that happens. It really does. I love it. Just, just little things. Little things make me happy. <laughs> right, so uh, this weekend we had um, our fellowship lunch, we call it bring and share lunch at church. And um, I'd, I'd done some cooking the night before. I cooked ginger chicken for the first time. Well, I think I have cooked it before, but this was the first time trying out a new recipe. And um, I added some extra bits than what the recipe called for. I followed this guy on YouTube and uh, he was super helpful because he was explaining about frying the ginger and the spring onion and the garlic in the oil to flavour the oil and to really impart the flavour before putting the chicken in or frying the chicken rather. Anyway, so I made a really lovely big pot of that. I made my smelly pork that people seem to like. Although it's really funny when people when people are new to the church and we go, oh yeah, yeah, it's smelly pork. And we have to kind of qualify it by explaining <laughs> it's okay to eat. Um, it's just this dish that it, it's got shrimp paste in it. So it, it just stinks a bit, but um, it's really yum. Anyway, um, yeah, so I decided to try and get there a bit earlier because um, Tom did take a few things to church the day before to save because we um, I use this like food warmer thing and that had been back at my house for Chinese New Year. Um, yeah, just some other bits and pieces. We thought oh, we might as well get, get there a bit earlier. Anyway, so... Um, you know, I'm there just getting things ready, you know, um, putting the chicken in to put in the slow cooker to warm it up. And, you know, thought well, I might wash up, wash up a couple of things. Anyway, then I started to hear water sort of like gushing a little bit. I was like, oh, <laughs> don't like the sound of that. 
and I kind of ignored it for a minute because I you know sometimes when you hear a sound that is not is a bit unexpected but at the same time you almost don't want to quite believe what it is and then you think you know what I'm just gonna hope it's I don't know someone has just used the toilet and it's just the sound of the water refilling or something like that anyway I think that's probably what I wanted it to be anyway eventually I gave up and thought no this is no this is a different kind of sound so I looked under the cupboard I looked in the cupboard rather under the sink and spotted immediately there was a pipe that the connector had not quite come apart but had come loose and there was a lot of water gushing from this pipe and so I reached in and it was really <laughs> a bit tricky because uh, there's a lot of stuff in this cupboard and I was like trying to get stuff out uh, there was like about three different dustpans there was like flower arranging equipment uh, rags and bottles of cleaning stuff and all sorts of kinds of things anyway so and then I was like I think I've got to mop up all this stuff somehow because it was getting drenched anyway I was having a little bit of a play trying to put this connector back together and every time I was trying to like screw it on it just was not screwing on so then um, something happened whereby I think I must have knocked the pipe further and you know those moments in cartoons where you see someone with like who've like nailed something into a pipe and the water's like literally splashing out and like they're doing this that happened to me that happened <laughs> to me I just had water like pouring into my face pouring out of the um because basically the pipe had come undone and the water was just pouring out of this pipe and I just couldn't see anything and uh Tom was in the building and my parents and Laura in there as well and um I just shouted can someone locate the stop cock <laughs> anyway they didn't locate the stop cock I did <laughs> it was under the cupboard and eventually I found it and um and stopped it um not before I got very very wet and um yeah and the floor got wet and there was <laughs> water everywhere but anyway so then we were like oh uh we've got people coming for lunch and we need to be able to wash up and blah 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 blah, blah. anyway we managed we managed because thankfully the the tap that I'd switched off didn't affect the water in the toilets so we were kind of getting jugs of water from the toilet and then using that to boil and you know anyway we got there but then we were a little bit concerned about how it was all going to get resolved because we rent the building it's not our building we're renting it from another church and so it would mean obviously contacting them there, contacting them and going, we're really sorry. <laughs> We've done something to your pipe. We don't know how it happened, um, but it's kind of, you know, it's your building. You need to fix it. So, yeah, so we thought, right, OK, we'll just have to we'll just have to be a phone call on you know, Monday morning. Um, anyway, so Tom had to go next door because there's and an, would you believe it there's two churches meeting on the same street in our town uh, and they use the building sometimes for like their children's work so we just went next door and told them what had happened anyway the lady that we were chatting to said oh my husband's a plumber I could just call him he can come and have a look at it and we were like that would be fantastic <laughs> So he came about 10 minutes later, had a look at it and went, oh, yes, I can see what it is. Anyway, fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. A few minutes later, yeah, I fixed it. <laughs> I was like, wow, thank you, Lord. <laughs> so anyway, that was my Sunday afternoon, <laughs> Sunday morning. <laughs> my least favourite house, Robert, is water related. Oh, <laughs> all right. All right. So that's the second one. Um. Yes, I know I haven't done any sentiments, but I have got some little pieces of very vanilla that I thought if I do want to put some sentiments, I could do. But I tend to deliberately leave these because I don't know what I'm going to use them for. Um, right now, I've got my trusted uh, pen here and I think I will just add a little bit more spatter onto this because these pieces of cardstock are looking a little bit too clean in my 
in my opinion. So um, I'm just going to pop a bit. There we go. That just helps grungy it up a little bit more. Um, just gets lots of texture on there. So thank you, Lisa. I know that's exactly what he said. Barb, can you know, could you imagine if we it had happened either earlier or if it happened when we weren't there? I mean that that room would have been flooded, absolutely flooded. I mean it's quite scary to think really. Right. Oh, I love this paper. Right, now this I am going to break my little roll for. I'm going to cut this because I just want to use a little section of it. Now, this technique. I demonstrated it a few maybe a couple of months ago and it's using that beautiful tree embossing folder I think I actually borrowed it from Wendy and it's where you put ink on the inside of the folder and then give it a little bit of a spritz with water it's fabulous such a fun technique right now this piece of yellow made it into my scrap box can you see why it's got a bit of water damage on that but i'm wondering whether to make use of it because look there's a little bit of a pinky stain there so that's let's make use of that um i quite like that actually well i like that it's torn a bit wonky this i'm not liking it's a bit dulling it's sort of this because this is quite vibrant this so oh I like that okay now have I got a bit more of that pink mm, let's see if I can now it's a bit weak in this sort of area right. okay now I prefer that now Got a little bit of Blackberry Bliss here, and I'm wondering whether to have that as a bit of a border. Um, oh, just going to test this out. I just quite like the black. No, I wonder if I can find something. Oh, oh, I've got a piece of black here. Quite like the idea. Of very very fine oh look at that you would think I had planned that wouldn't you I was just gonna say I'd like a really thin border and look at that oh, oh. I love it when that happens hi Deborah uh, which church so we're at uh, blah, blah blah we're at welsh Bull community church yeah and we we were kind of made homeless uh through lockdown because the building we were using is doesn't belong to us it's uh the, sorry both buildings that we're used don't belong to us actually three buildings we've used haven't belonged to us um and so we were looking so during lockdown we basically just went online so just disclaimer for those of you who are not interested in watching our church services uh, just to say on Sundays if you see me go live it's at 10 30 in the morning uh, it's my church service because I can only broadcast from my phone on a YouTube channel that's that has over a thousand subscribers so uh, just scroll by don't don't stop if you're not interested please you know that's we, we're not offended if you're not interested at all um anyway so yeah so through lockdown we did online and met up on zoom and then when we could meet up a bit more easily because even though um we weren't told we couldn't meet up there were just a whole load of restrictions and a lot of venues would not rent out um, because the the whole kind of cleaning, coping COVID for safe and all that was just so tricky. So um, it happened that the building that we're currently using, I'd used it in the past for a fundraiser and I knew the people that ran it 
because they used to run a coffee morning and I used to take all my children used to go to that coffee morning at some point in their lives and um, they were very happy because they they're an elderly congregation and they haven't been using it they were just happy for someone to be in there and using the building so that's that's why we aren't using it right I'm just eyeing this up and seeing how much of this yellow I want I quite like this jaggedy kind of situation here there we go right now <laughs> how am I going to stick this so that it's um, think what I might do is just put loads of glue on here I think I'm going to have to cut a few things apart in a second but this is a bit too tall you see what is a coffee morning oh sorry no I don't give the kids coffee they used to have like milk or something um tradition a coffee morning is just where like Sometimes a, a venue will just open up, serve drinks, so we serve tea or coffee and biscuits. There used to be a whole, I'll tell you what the kids loved, there would always be a whole basket of biscuits on the table and you paid a pound, you just gave your little donation, you paid your pound and you could pretty much eat as many biscuits as you want. So my kids loved that bit and it was all I could do to kind of go, just one or just two, no, one more. <laughs> no more now right let's go <laughs> otherwise Monday morning it was always Monday mornings so as the children got older um, and some of mine would, were starting to go to school um, I would take the younger ones uh, so yeah they kind of these old ladies got used to me turning up with like sometimes two children three children maybe someone else's child <laughs> that would oh and then as my children got older sometimes I would take a friend's children there for a bit of fun you know so that was good right I'm sorry but I'm gonna have to do a bit of Blackberry Bliss um dotage now because I just feel like it could do with some across here so just needs a bit of something a stronger darker element Right, I've got enough going on there. I just want a little bit more now. Why oh, this yellow? There we go. Quite like that. What if you use Blackberry Bliss for the base? Ooh, let me see if I've got any. <laughs> oh, I think I have one, Janine. very dark it almost is a bit too dark um, now this is going to go light that's fresh freesia then i've got some gorgeous grape and highland heather i haven't got any rich raspberry cup but... see this is too i think this is too blue no, that's wrong. I might just have to cut some rich raspberry just to show you what it's like. Although it's quite pinky. How are you, Mindy? Nice to see you. There we go. That's better, isn't it? jog down the hill just as soon as Ruth is finished <laughs> ah, you've got happy mail have you Miss Linda
Okay, that's done. Moving on. That's number three. Okay, let's put these aside for a second. So, what have I got left over here? Oh, I'm getting through my piles. I've only got grey to go now. This grey one that I've kind of planned for. So, we've got this lovely texture here. Oh, should we try doing one that's that way around this time? So this I stamped. Now, I remember doing this. This was stamped uh, with, it was like a revisit of a video I did about five years ago using um, a popular set that had as beautiful ferns in it. So I revisited it to show you how to use a strip of paper to mask off an area so that you just have a ready-made sort of portion for your sentiments so this was a leftover one that i obviously didn't use so it'll be interesting to see i wonder if i could use it to go rather than having it do that i'm going to cut it there and cut it there and have it go inwards instead so i don't want to use my trimmer so what i'm going to do is fold it now i remember learning this trick as a child and thinking it was just amazing uh, if you haven't got scissors, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat. Uh, I just want to make sure that oh, I didn't. Did I not fold that on my? It doesn't feel like I folded it correctly, but anyway, uh, you just fold the paper or card backwards and forwards. Um, now, of course, you could just like try and rip it like that, and it probably would work. However, hi Chris, um, I know this is a bit naughty, but if you lick it, right, I'm going to do it off screen because it's a bit unladylike. If you lick it, you start to moisten those fibres and it makes it very, very easy then to pull apart. I remember thinking that was amazing. So There we go. And then you've pretty much got that straight line without having to cut it. So there we go. There's my torn panel. It's going to look beautiful there. And I'm going to just do the other one. I'm just going to find a spot to fold it. Try and fold it. Up. If you try and do it edge to edge, you probably will get it right. There we go got a bone folder that'll probably help as well so did the plumber get smelly pork no he didn't actually we'd packed it away by then <laughs> hi valerie it's like you do with a soft metal i think my mum says you worry eventually absolutely yeah i do that when i make jewelry um i don't i rarely actually cut my wire i just bend it backwards and forwards and eventually it goes Although, just be aware, if you do do that with metal, if you bend something backwards or forwards a few times, it gets warm. And if, you, if, you, if it's a particularly tricky metal, um, I've, I've been known to slightly scold my finger doing that because I've touched it and gone, whoa, that's hot. <laughs> so, sorry, I'm just licking offline. Right. And of course, our Stampin' Up! inks are non-toxic, so I'm not harming myself doing that okay so look now we've got a panel that we can put there and there I'm not quite sure what's going to happen in between but um, I don't quite like the idea of having a row of just different things to kind of connect it I wonder if that could go in the background or maybe something like that. This is just about playing with different things and textures and seeing how they look.
fun seeing different thing things against each other, the juxtaposition of different elements. Just having a look at whether that would look. Ah, the thing is, I stamped that on white. This is on white and this is on very vanilla. But I might be able to get away with it because it all just looks a bit rustic, doesn't it? Oh, I quite like that. And I think what I might do is just fold that back a little bit. Hi, Miss Phoebe. You wonder what my tongue looks like. <laughs> Hi, Mimi. Who's Mimi Howenstein? Welcome. This is my first live. I found you through Lisa Freeman. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Isn't she kind? Hi, Brigitte. It hurt when you ripped. <laughs> yeah. Well, it might hurt, but at the end of the day, it's sitting doing nothing in my scrap drawer. I've just cut this. And I'm thinking, did I do it proper? Did I do enough? Um, yes, it, it's doing nothing sitting in there, so I'd rather use it. Uh, it might I might not be using it as I thought I was intending to use it, but you know, it's better to be used than not used or end up in the bin. So. Hi, Kathy. Did I make this one? Both I made both of these at some point, Janine. Yeah, I did. Now, <laughs> I was about to go, oh, I'll try and find a video and link it. Um, I'm not going to promise that. If I do get time, I will. But um, if anyone else can, if anyone else knows, do feel free to put it in the comments if they find the videos. This, this is about... I think under a year ago I did did this one because I think I was definitely in this room. And, um, I just I love fiddling with like little textures and things and just seeing how they look against each other and a little bit of a fiddle. Oh. I forgot. I did bring. <laughs> these are some. These are some retired elements that I've had for ages. That looks quite cute, doesn't it? Unless I do that on there. there we go. Do that on there. There. This could be like an alternative Valentine's card, couldn't it? This could be like a masculine, a masculine Val card. Um, ooh, I want to get that pattern in somehow. I'm just going to rip that really thin. You have a chocolate Kimberly. What's a chocolate Kimberly? I'm intrigued. Thank you, Cheryl Adams. Kind of you. Did I make the scrolly paper? Oh, this one? Yes, Janine, I did. Yeah, that's using the Parisian uh, something. 
uh, embossing folder and that was a technique that I did I showed you guys again probably a few months ago where you put the craft white ink on the embossing folder and then you run it through so that was on basic gray and then you put yellow on your embossing folder then run it through and because you've laid that foundation of the craft white ink it makes it look super cool and this was just done on white but i think i must have put yellow on one and gray on the other it's it, isn't it cool it, it just looks like um porcelain and you know, what's it called when they do reliefs for like in architecture and stuff it does look super cool a kimberly biscuit covered in chocolate cool yes it does look old like an old patina yeah yeah you can do it with any kind of well i, I think because of the 3d embossing folders like the, the deep the deeper embossing folders are great for that kind of thing um i'm deliberately leaving the tails long because I, I i sometimes quite like the idea of it almost looking like i forgot to cut it so for those of you who are like into your neat card making i'm really sorry but this is not going to be <laughs> this is not going to be up your alley this is more for kind of people who like it to almost look like you've thrown all sorts of bits together and it just happened to fall artistically. <laughs> so um, I'm afraid that's the look we're going for today, guys. Like I just picked up a whole load of stuff out of my house and I just threw it on. But I'll tell you what I will do, just to make it a bit more interesting, I will tie the ends. Ooh. You know, little details like this, like putting the string on the rib on the buttons, I think make all the difference. The devil's in the details, you know. I don't even know where that saying comes from. I'm so sure someone will Google it for me. They are mini cookies. Oh. Now, am I going to get a knot in this bone? Because this one's a bit shorter. Oh, come on. Come on. Yes. Okay. So, we've got that on there. That on there. Not quite sure I'm going to secure it just yet. But I think my little blue dots might come in handy. Um, oh, look. Oh, look. I've got a little, little mini tag. Oh, how cute. This reminds me of the work of Sarah Lugg. Um, she was quite popular in the 90s in the UK. She would get found objects and she would just display, just like display them a bit like this on tags and have photographs taken and she sold artwork and, you know, that kind of thing. And... Um, this very much reminds me of her work. I don't know whether to do a double layer. Or whether actually having just the grey there next to it. No, I think that's okay. See, I'm wondering whether to have the small one on there now so you can see that it's more of a tag. Oh, and I quite like actually how that heart has slightly fallen to the side. I was going to put it there, but... I actually quite like it falling off a bit. Not too much. Hmm. Okay. I'm enjoying this so far. And then do we want a little peak of something? It's a bit grey, isn't it? Oh, maybe. This is what we do with a tag. We tear the tag in half. Just for that nice bit of texture. I think I might just chop that off a bit more. I used to make cards like this. Don't know why I quit. 
I don't know why you quit either, Cheryl. Don't quit. Take it back up again. It's so much fun. Because you, you end up with something absolutely unique. So unique. Actually, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to put the tag end in this end. I'm going to put the squared off end up in that end there. Right, anything else that I can snuck in? What else have I got here? No. I, th I think I just need to call it a day on this one. Right, so call it a day, call it a night. Where's Heidi? Is Heidi um, Schaller on here? We were, <laughs> we were talking the earlier about sayings. And she says, why do people say I'm going to call it a night? She goes, a night is a night. It is a night. So you don't call it a night. It is a night. <laughs> she made me laugh. Uh... Oh, banana bread with walnuts. Oh, who's making that? Oh, Kathy, uh, Janine's passed Kathy a slice. Awesome. Right, I quite like that tag on there. So that's going to go on. And then... I wanted the smaller one on there, I decided. I'll find my little glue dots. If I had my hop glue gun on, I think I would have used that, but I don't. Now, this is what my friend Sheila's been going on about. She said they put, they rolled the glue dots in a different way now. She doesn't like it, but we'll see. Okay, so I've put two glue dots on there. Because I don't want this thing falling off. Right, now this is definitely going to be a 3D card. If you're going to be giving this to somebody, you may have to either give it by hand or put extra postage on it. Uh, question, Cheryl, what are the corrugated... Oh, they, they're retired, unfortunately. They were just called corrugated elements. You can tell how old it was because it's just the old Stampin' Up! packaging. Corrugated elements. Yep. You might be able to pick them up somewhere if a Stampin' Up! demonstrator is having a bit of a clear out or something or a, a Stampin' Up! fan. Corrugated elements, yeah. I just hate throwing Stampin' Up! stuff away. <laughs> We're not throwing it away, but getting rid of it when I think, oh, I might be able to use that one day. So I held on to them. Yeah, see, Vicky doesn't like the new the new system. Well, I was going to say something then. I can't remember what it was. Oh, I remember now. Right, uh, I have sent out today my thank you video for <clears throat> December. Sorry, it's really late. So for those of you who don't know, if you are my customer or if you super chat me or PayPal me in any month, the following month, I'm supposed to film something and send it to you. However, I was a bit late this month. So, so late. In fact, it's now the next month. But anyway, I will soon be filming the, the January. Thank you. Uh, However, there was somebody who super chatted me at the end of January um, whose surname is Geedy. If you're that person, can you please email me, ruthtrice at gmail.com, because I have no way of contacting you. 
Um, I did do a little bit of a Facebook, you know, search, but I couldn't find you. So please, please, if you super chat me at the end of January and your surname is Gidi, please could you email me ruthtrice at gmail.com. Thank you very much. That ends the public information broadcast. Hi, Elizabeth Akma. Oh, apparently Sarah said it was a mistake made by the suppliers and that hopefully glue dots will go back to normal. Well, Sheila will be so pleased. Hi, Roberta. Oh, that's okay, my darling. Lovely to see you. Glad you're here. That's looking a bit dull there, so I think I might do some splattage in... A mossy meadow, my thanks. But I will just put these away because I don't want these getting all splattered. Oh, and what do you think about put, putting a little ladybug on? I just think a little ladybug somewhere would just be so cute. Just sort of like he's on a leaf, you know, so he's barely noticeable. Yes, isn't that fun? So you'll know how much this if you give this to somebody and they go, Oh, thanks for the card, he'd be like, Okay, and if they go, I spotted the ladybird or well, the ladybug, you'd be like, Ah, oh, they properly looked at the card. And you'll know whether to give them a decent card next time or not. Do you know what I mean? You, come on, card makers. You know what I'm talking about. If someone doesn't appreciate a card you've given them, you'd think twice the next time. I am saying that slightly tongue-in-cheek, everybody, okay? Please don't shoot me for that. Hi, Glamour! Shall maybe the added postage? Yeah, so in the UK, if our cards cannot fit through that space there, it's so this is letter size. If they can't fit through that, either lengthwise or width, width thickness, we then skip, we have to pay large letter. And then if it doesn't fit through this, it's then a parcel. So it can jump from two pounds or 150 or something like that to three pounds <laughs> if it doesn't fit in one of these so for example it's really annoying if i want to send a reinka basically the packaging around a reinka will probably make that a parcel rate that will make it three pounds to send a reinka yep Okay, so now these little babies are hollow, so I find you have to put two glue dots just to make sure they don't come away. So if you've got these from the other year, pop two glue dots on there, and there he goes. Right, that's it. Oh, on the hour. Dot on the hour. Fantastic. Right, let's go through these. So that was number four. This was number three. I'll turn that around. This is number two. And this was number one. Let's pull back a little bit so you can all see them. So tonight was all about using up those scraps. Now, I know I, heard, I saw someone mention, oh, I don't have as nice scraps and oh, I wish I had scraps to play with. Um, you, you may find that you've got a beautiful piece of DSP or something like that. Don't, you don't necessarily have to use stamped things. I mean, I've only used, well, I've used that one stamped element, that stamped element, that one. And yes, OK, I've used two. But you see this one in the back here. Now, that's not very special. I used it because of the colours and the textures. So for those of you who are new to my style of stamping or you've been inspired by what I do and you may go, oh, I stamped a sheet and I didn't like it. 
please do not throw it away. Put it in your scrap drawer and it's perfect for stuff like this because you're only using small elements. So if there's a bit that you didn't like, just don't use it. But you may find for a little focal point like this or like this, that it's just right. Um, and then for a bit of a background bit that doesn't really matter really what it looks like so much, you can use it for something like this. But it elevates your project. It looks like you spent hours on it. OK, you don't need to tell somebody that that was your trying out bit. OK, you know, it'll be our secret. You don't have to tell anybody that. Um, special crafters code. That's what I should call it. We shouldn't keep secrets. Uh, crafters code. So there we go. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, another one that I was sceptical about in the beginning. I'm now in love with. Oh, oh, bless you. Grandma of seven. Welcome. I love your handle. That's so cool. What a cool name. Grandma of seven. Do you have to change it every so often? Because <laughs> I'm sure there was a point where it was one and two and three and four and five and six. But now it's seven. Congratulations. What a fabulous number. Thank you, Annie. I love these, but can't get so creative. Annie, you've just seen me do it, my darling. I've just ripped up paper. I've chosen a focal point. Let's go through this. Let's go through it again. Choose your focal point. Choose colours that match your focal point. And um, then start ripping. OK, that is what I've done. I've chose my focal point, chose the colours that matched, and then ripped up some paper and created a bit of a frame. Exactly what I did here. Same as what I did here. This one's a little bit different, granted. But what I've done is gone for three strips. OK, that's your law of the rule of three. You've got your three strips and then a focal point by putting those two elements there. So this is great because this does leave a little space if you want to stamp something. This would make a great Valentine's card for a guy. Um, just a bit different, a bit rustic, not too romantic, you know. <laughs> just in case he's not like that. So just putting an extra dimensional on there, it just feels like it needs it. So please have a go and then phone a friend. Yes, you can always phone me. Well, depends what time of day it is really. But, um, so far we're staying at seven. Ah, oh, snap, Linda and grandma of seven got the same amount of grandkids. Ah. Oh. Yes, please try, Annie. I'm sure you will just have fun tearing up bits of paper, no matter what. Release your inner child. <laughs> so if you want some further inspiration, please do head to artfulstampin.co.uk. That's where my blog is. Um, also, in the description, there'll be links to my YouTube, no, my Facebook page. So my Facebook page is where I put links to all these videos. And sometimes some bits of news. Actually, that reminds me, there's a new release out at the moment with all these fabulous new pens. And I need to share that. And also my Artful Stampin' space is for you. It's for you to share pictures of items that you've made after seeing and being inspired by my channel. And then if you feel like you need some extra tuition, I have got classes that are running and um, I've got one scheduled for the 14th, 15th, 15th, I think it's the 15th. Yes, it is the 15th. It's a Tuesday, isn't it? Day after Valentine's Day. Um, I'm doing a class making a box, which I've temporarily mislaid. Oh, here it is. So it's a class learning how to make this box and this lid. But you will need to provide all the materials for that. And it's over Zoom, done over Zoom. And it costs £20, that, that class. Now, I am planning to do a junk journal class. And I'm thinking of doing it on the weekend of the 18th of March. So before I set it in stone on Artful Stamping Space, I did ask who would be interested and quite a few of you have said yes you are but I will put pop the proposed date actually I say 18th it's 19th this is a Saturday but for you guys in Australia because I know you struggle 
if I do something on a Saturday, um, I will possibly do a session. I'll maybe just do two sessions. I'll do one uh, on Friday evening to catch the South Pacific friends and then one session on the Saturday maybe um, around the sort of four o'clock time to catch any guys in the uh, to catch you got UK and European, but also you guys who are uh, more west, uh, where you it will be morning for you. So um, please let me know. Barb loves that class. Yes, Barb's face was priceless when she made this. I wish I had recorded it. Yeah, she's done that class. So have a great dinner, Cheryl. Have a lovely time. So. Um, yeah, I haven't quite decided how much that class is going to be um, because, yeah, I do I do go through quite a bit of stuff. But however, what I, I, you know what, I'm just going to bite the bullet and say it's £20 because um, that I am there for about three hours for each one. So I think I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and say it's £20. However, what I'm going to say is the Zoom is going to run continuously if that makes sense so you can join at any point but I will give you the times that I will be available to do the class and if you want to just hang out and chat to the other people that are doing the junk journaling um, you can do that so it will be a continual zoom from Friday through to Saturday evening I think that's the fairest way to do that one um, because it is it is a full-on class. Again, you will need to bring products, your own products to the table for that one. And I will put a list of products that you will need. Right. Thank you so much. Yes, do email me if you're interested in the junk journal class um, or the... I've got a few spaces left for the box one on the 15th. Right. Lots of love to you all. Thank you so much for joining me. I've got now got to... Uh, call somebody about some cards and I'll speak to you guys again soon running to the mailbox says Linda oh thanks Linda yes you said you wanted to do the junk journal again yeah it was fun right take care bye oh give me a thumbs up please thank you